guys welcome to the episode number two of Microsoft ERP beginners tutorial series in the episode number one we have created a legal entity in the episode number two we will be exploring about how to set up the number sequence for our newly created legal entity a number sequence is one of the very important setup and we cannot proceed any further with our SCM course without setting up a number sequence so let's get started with our number sequence setup Here is the legal entity that we have created in the previous episode. Just if you missed my previous episode, do watch the previous episode and come back here. So we have created a new legal entity in the previous episode, um, but we have not touched the number sequence setup yet. And we are now going to go ahead and start creation of our number sequence setup from the scratch in this episode. So as you can see, there are no number sequence code assigned to any of the references in the legal entity, not only within a legal entity, but if you get into the accounts payable parameter under the number sequence tab, you don't see any number sequence code. Likewise, in the accounts receivable parameter and the number sequence tab, you don't see any of the number sequence code assigned over here, right? So, um, so before getting started with the number sequence code, what is a number sequence code? To answer to that question, um, there are specific master data and uh, the transactional data in the, in the system which requires or the system automatically generates a unique identification number for them. The master data could be a vendor account and a transactional data could be a journal that gets posted when you post a vendor invoice or a customer invoice. So all those these kinds of record need a unique identification number that are automatically generated by the system. So these unique identification number are generated based on the number format that we defined within the number sequence code. So the Microsoft Dynamics is already identified the list of data that requires this unique identification code and they have listed them against the relevant module in the form of references. So for example, under the purchase side, the, there are specific sets of data like vendor account, one-time supplier, note ID. So all of them require a unique identification number uh, that gets generated during various transactions. So it's very important that we tag the number format in a form of a se number sequence code over here for all those references. Likewise, there are some references also available in the sales side, which is under the account receivable module, like customer account, one-time customer, free text invoice when you post, you might, the journal needs a specific um, unique identification number, which system automatically generates based on the number sequence, number format, and so on. So that is the actual purpose of defining a number sequence sequence code in the system. Example here, there is a reference called as a vendor account and I need to define a number sequence code for the vendor account. So whenever I create a vendor account or a supplier record in the system, the system automatically generates a supplier account number based on the number sequence code that I defined here. And of course, my number sequence code needs to be automatic in order for us to uh, generate the vendor account automatically. But about automatic manual, we'll discuss later in this episode. But in general, you need your number sequence code to be defined here for the vendor account number to be generated whenever you create a new vendor record in the system, which is uh, comes under the master data category, right? So, um, so now, in order for us to create a number sequence code for every reference manually, it's going to be a very, very tedious process. And it's also, you can create manually and assign it, but it's not recommended method because it's so much time consuming. So in the Microsoft Dynamics 365, we have a wizard where, which using the wizard, you can automatically create number sequence code for all the references available in the system. So let's first create a number sequence code automatically. And later in the second half of this video, we will explore the manual number sequence process as well. Okay. So for automatically creating a number sequence, you need to get into the organization administration module. This is the same module which we used for creating a legal entity in the, in the previous episode, which is we used this uh, menu button. In this number sequencing, we need to use the number sequence menu path. So just get into that menu and we will see a number sequence listed. So all these number sequence are the a number sequence from different legal entity. This is a global form. So you will also not only see the number sequence specific to your legal entity, which is ADC Motors, 
but you will also see the number sequence specific to other legal entities and that's the reason why you will you are seeing so many number sequence over here even though we haven't created any number sequence for adc motor specifically one of the primary reason for the number sequence uh, table to be a shared table is um, there are a certain number sequence code which can be created as a shared number sequence code. We will be seeing this again when, when we discuss further about the number sequence code. A shared, when I make a number sequence code as a shared number sequence code, for example, and I assign it to my vendor account, and when I create a vendor account in the ADC Motors legal entity, that is the ADC legal entity which I am at the moment in, then my first vendor account will be created with the first number sequence which is 001. And since the same number sequence is also shared against other legal entities, if I create a vendor account in any other legal entity, even for the very first time, the other legal entity will have a number sequence of 002 because the one is already available in my legal entity. It's a shared number sequence. So the number sequence will be continuous across the legal entity. Okay. So um, since the number sequence code can be shared uh, this number sequence code table is also a shared table and you can specifically see the number sequence from all the legal entity over here more on this topic of sharing a number sequence code we'll discuss in detail later in this episode so for now let's focus on creating an automatic number sequence for that you need to click on a button called as generate button at the top so as soon as you click on the generate button you will get a wizard let's wait for the wizard screen to open so here is a wizard uh, click on the next button so system automatically displays uh, um, all the uh, references that are available against uh, your uh, system and uh, it will all, all uh, automatically generate the number sequence code as you can see so click on the next and uh, that's your um, total number of uh, number sequence that are number sequence code uh, that are uh, it's a, just a, a summary page that displays a complete number so click on the finish button and your setup that is your automatic number sequence setup is almost finished as soon as you click on the finished button So uh, once the process is done, uh, you can now get into the uh, modules like accounts, payable module. And if you just refresh it, uh, you will see that the number sequence code are auto populated. And likewise, I go into the accounts receivable and I refresh it. And I will again see that the number sequence code are all populated automatically. Yeah, so that's here. And that's for the accounts payable module. So likewise, in, if you check all the modules in the system, you will see that the number sequence code are auto populated while after running the wizard automatically. So that really saves a lot of your efforts. So that's about the setting up automatic setting up of the number sequence. So now let's uh, explore the number sequence code and let's do a little more deep dive into the number sequence code itself. So if you check the number sequence code for a vendor account, by double clicking on it you will see that the system automatically uh, creates a number sequence code and the format for the number sequence code would be it has a prefix of the uh, legal entity which is ADC followed by a constant which is a dash and followed by a hash which is six hashes so which means when I create a vendor in the system the vendor account will be ADC dash 000001 right so that's going to be my vendor account number but my vendor account having a prefix of the company name doesn't make sense moreover if i now get into my customer that is whenever i create my customer record if i check into my uh, number sequence for the customer let me expand everything and again even for the customer the customer account if i create a first customer account it's going to be adc dash 000001 so which means that the customer account and the vendor account will look similar according to our number format that's been created right so it could cause some confusion 
So in order to avoid the confusion or also I will take this as an opportunity for me to demonstrate you the manual number sequence creation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the number sequence for my vendor account to something specific to my company or something more relevant to a vendor, right? Instead of having a company as a prefix, I'm going to have VEN, vendor as a prefix hyphen 0001 as my first vendor account, right? So I'm going to change the number sequence code for my vendor account. I'm going to create my new vendor sequence code for my vendor account. So in order for me to create my new uh, number sequence code, uh, I need to go back to my uh, number sequence section and uh, click on the new button number sequence. So as soon as you click on the new number sequence, you will get a uh, uh, new record uh, screen so you can uh, fill in your number sequence code name so I'm going to give a vendor uh, uh, sequence code okay so that's going to be my sequence code so let me also give the name as vendor sequence code let me expand all uh, expand all so that expands all the fast tabs so here is where the scope is defined so at the moment by default it is selected as a shared um, number sequence code as I mentioned before if I make it as a shared number sequence code I can use this number sequence code against multiple legal entity so which means my number sequencing will be shared against multiple legal entity vendor 001 in another legal entity if I create the record that is vendor account it will be vendor 002 and likewise it will be shared against multiple legal entity in my case this particular number sequence I want it to be specific to my company I do not want to really share my number sequence I want it to be continuous within only my company so I can change this from the shared to company okay so as soon as I choose the company and uh, click on the save button I will see that the company dro drop down uh, popping up right so here I can choose my uh, company name which is ADC Motors in this case okay let me close this warning for now and save save this again um, so that is my uh, scope parameter. That's very important to uh, um, select a proper company over here. Okay, so now the segment that we already discussed. Uh, I really don't like the segment uh, uh, segment uh, form, uh, form format. So I'm going to just delete this, uh, this particular uh, uh, company from here. Uh, so just click on it, select it and remove it. For the constant, I'm going to have a prefix of V and vendor and hyphen and I'm going to make it only like uh, six um, alphanumeric so I'm uh, putting six six hashes here six and this is four so totally ten characters for my vendor account it's perfect and that's going to be my format that's how my vendor account going to look like the first vendor account will have vend dash zero 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 one okay and the reference here will be automatically filled when I tag this particular number sequence code against a specific reference. I will show you after tagging, I will come back here and I will show you that. Uh, for now it's blank because I have not tagged my vendor sequence code against any reference that is uh, any reference over here. Okay. Um, so that's where the reference is blank. So let me go further down. Um, the stop button, if I enable the stop button and if example I, I assign this number sequence code as a vendor account number sequence and I create a vendor account as soon as I create a vendor account the vendor account will try to pull a number sequence but the number sequence is uh, stopped so you will get an error you will not be able to create your vendor account because your number sequence specific to the vendor account is stopped so that's the um, you know uh, the feature of stopped you may test this scenario yourself you can try to create a number sequence mark it as stopped and try to create a vendor account and see what happens so stop basically stops you from creating a record because the system will not be able to create the next number sequence because the number sequence code is stopped and we have a concept of a manual and automatic number sequence for example, this is number sequence code is a number sequence code for um, generating a vendor account number. Whenever I create a vendor account, I want a vendor account number generated. Uh, like um, 
uh, I will show you uh, um, in, in a while after setting up and create a vendor account, you will see that the vendor account number uh, will be fetched from the number sequence code. So if you that will happen only if this is marked as uh, continuous, this, this is marked as not manual. That is, if you mark this as a manual and create your vendor account, your vendor account will still be blank. That is, uh, you need to key in your own vendor account number. The vendor account number will be user defined because you are marking the number sequence code as manual. But if you just turn off the manual, so which means that will become an automatic number sequence code. So if now if you create a vendor account in the system, um, a vendor account number will be automatically generated based on this number sequence code because we have turned off the manual flag. Okay. Uh, we will see the difference of this while we create a vendor account shortly after uh, configuring the number sequence code. And likewise, the continuous is again um, uh, uh, a very interesting topic. So if you make the number sequence code as continuous, then that means that if the user number one create a vendor account, the vendor account will be 001. User number two creates a vendor account, the vendor account will be 002. Three, 004. So the number sequence will be continuous. But the vendor account is not a good example. Let me give you a better example. Let's say uh, vendor uh, invoice, okay? So as I mentioned, both for the master record and also for the transactional record, the number sequence are used. That is the unique identification number are generated automatically by the system. Likewise, when you post your vendor invoice, uh, you need your number sequence uh, which generates an automatic uh, journal number, right? So <clears throat> let's say that I marked my number sequence code for my vendor invoices as continuous and 15 different users are posting vendor invoice at the same time, okay? Since the number sequence code is continuous, system will try for all those 50 vendor invoices to have a continuous number sequence even though they all posted simultaneously in the same fraction of time, you will have a lot of performance delay because the system is trying to assign a continuous number sequence for all the 50 users from the number one to number 50 because the number sequence needs to be continuous because we have turned on the continuous parameter, right? Um, so that will cause a lot of performance delay. That will cause a lot of delays um, in uh, posting the um, um, the journal uh, at the back end because the number sequence code generation takes a lot of time. Uh, but if I, uh, in order to avoid this particular performance delay, we have an option at the bottom under the performance tab, which is called as a pre-allocation. So if I turn on the pre-allocation, I cannot turn on the pre-allocation if the continuous is turned on. So I need to turn off the continuous. So which means now <clears throat> I'm saying the system that my number sequences are not continuous, need not be continuous. In such cases, the pre-allocations will be turned on and I can uh, make a allocation quantity that is a pre-allocated number of number sequence codes. Let's say if I put the quantity as five, then a quantity of five number sequence code will be allocated to every users who are logged into a specific, who are logged into this environment. So for every session the user have logged in, he, he will be allocated with uh, five number sequence code. So let's say that if the user number one is creating a vendor account in the system, the vendor account is creating it for very first time. So the vendor account will follow a number of VN-0001 in our number sequence example. And when the vendor number two is creating a number sequence code, the vendor number two will get a number of VN-0006 because the first five number sequence code is allocated to the vendor, uh, to the user one. So when the user two creates a vendor, then he will get zero, uh, vendor six. When user three creates a number, he will uh, get vendor 11. When user four creates it, then he will get uh, vendor 16, right? So even though only four vendors are created in the system, it should realistically, if it's a continuous number sequence, should be one, two, three, and four. But if it's non-continuous with the pre-allocation, the performance will increase because system need not wait. But 
uh, the number sequencing won't be continuous. The first vendor account will be one, second vendor account will be six, third vendor account will be 11 because every users have five under their name pre-allocated to them. So now taking this to an example of um, uh, multiple uh, invoice posting. So the even if you post 50 invoices together and every when every user is having his own quota of um, number sequence, so your invoices will be posted right away. There's no need of waiting for the continuous number sequence allocation. So it will be quickly posted. So the performance will be improved a lot more uh, in such cases. But um, in my example or in, in my uh, demo, it will not make sense if I have a vendor account created with uh, 1, 6 and uh, 11. So for my ex demo purpose, I'm going to turn off the pre-allocation and turn on the continuous number sequence. Okay, so that is about the importance of the continuous number sequence. And here under the number allocation, this largest number should match the total number of hash here. So which means six is a length. So you need to make sure that there are only six nines here. So yeah, there are six nines here now. Okay. So that is the simple setup of number sequence code. Uh, and more about the lower number, higher number we'll discuss later. So that is about the number sequence code. Let me save this number sequence code. Uh, copy the number sequence code and go to the accounts payable parameter under the number sequence tab remove this number sequence and paste it over here okay. so which means I have created a manual number sequence code I have not uh, in this in this exam the second scenario and I have assigned it to my vendor so similarly, I can do it also for the customer account, which I will be doing it later, not now. Uh, so uh, when we discuss about the sales and marketing, we will, uh, you know, start again with the number sequence code for the customer account. Now we are going to start with our procurement related modules in the SEM course. So we will first focus only on the vendor part. Okay. So now I have a vendor sequence code set up and I'm saving it. So let's go ahead and uh, create a vendor now in the system. So for creating a vendor, you might need to go into the procurement and sourcing or the accounts payable module. So let me go into the procurement and sourcing module. Do not focus on the vendor creation process yet because that's a separate discussion, a separate topic. We will do a deep dive into it later. But just for um, demonstrating and making you understand what do I mean by number sequence, I'm going to quickly create a vendor account. So for creating a vendor account, you need to go into the procurement and sourcing module on all vendor section. and click on the new button and you see that the number sequence code is automatically created um, because the number sequence code is not manual it's uh, automatic and um, you have your first number sequence code is uh, uh, created which is uh, when 0001 and this is a non-editable field because it cannot be defined by the user because it's a automatic number sequence that's that's automatically retrieved from the uh, the vendor sequence code that we have created and to give you another example of what do you do what do we mean by uh, allow user changes to a higher number so let's say if I turn on this parameter then uh, this will enable the user to do some changes to the number sequence code. Previously, as you can see, the number sequence uh, code, uh, that is the vendor account, cannot be uh, cannot be changed. It's uh, grayed out, right? But now, the system will allow you to do the changes uh, if you want to change it to a higher number than the current number, okay? So, uh, let's say if I just delete this uh, particular number sequence code and if I uh, create a new number sequence code you see that this is now editable and I can go ahead and edit it to a higher number sequence because of this particular parameter is turned on okay so but in order to uh, just you know avoid any confusions with the number sequence I'm going to just turn off this parameter and save it and likewise in the reference section you will also have the account receivable vendor account automatically populated because the um, the number sequence code is uh, associated with the vendor account here so 
that's automatically populated previously it was black so this is pretty much about the number sequence setup and um, the concept of number sequence in the uh, Microsoft Direct Finance and Operation but we will uh, be uh, coming back to the number sequence whenever we need some changes to the number sequence done or uh, while well, we discuss about various topic in the future episodes so hope you enjoyed this episode see you again in the next episode where we will be setting up the chart of accounts and we will be exploring about the credit and debit language in Microsoft Dynamics 365.